post is from the subreddit relationships and it's by user caught between friends. Pregnant best friend and roommate, 24 female, cheated on her long time boyfriend, my friend, 25 male, and I, 24 female, don't know what to do. Olivia and I have been best friends since the summer before freshman year of college. Our personalities are very different. She's outgoing and people oriented while I'm more bookish and introverted. But we've always had a great dynamic and mutual respect for one another. We've lived together since our sophomore year of college, which has been mostly fine except for two issues. Her bringing guys over all the time and her on and off relationship with a guy named Nathan. Nathan was in my major and he instantly hit it off with Olivia the first time I introduced them to one another. They began dating halfway through her freshman year. Since we're on the same major, I started becoming good friends with Nathan as well. He's charming and intelligent, and Olivia's mother greatly approved of the relationship since he's also Korean. But Olivia herself often told me that she felt bored in the relationship and that he was too clingy and controlling. They broke up for the first time after a year of dating, after which Olivia went through what can only be described as a wild phase. She was skipping classes, partying nearly every night, bringing guys home, the works. Nathan was heartbroken by the breakup and I didn't want to make him feel even worse, so I didn't tell him about Olivia's behavior. After a semester of recklessness and almost failing out of school, Olivia started to cool her heels and, in her words, yearned for the stability of a relationship again. She and Nathan started talking again and eventually rekindled their relationship by the start of junior year. This is how their relationship has played out for the past six years. They start out fine, Olivia gets bored, they break up. Olivia goes wild for a bit, Nathan casually dates for a while, Olivia gets bored and comes back crawling to Nathan, they get back together. I love Olivia like a sister, but her behavior over the years towards Nathan has really pissed me off and I can't understand why he goes back to her, but they're adults. All I can do is be there for them and try not to mention Olivia to Nathan or vice versa when we're hanging out during their periods apart. Early last year, however, Olivia told me that she doesn't find partying and sleeping around as enjoyable as she once did and that she wanted to settle down with Nathan for good. I was happy to hear this as Nathan had confided in me that despite having other girlfriends while he and Olivia were split, he's only really ever loved her. They began dating once again, but they seemed different this time. Olivia was much more subdued and sensitive to Nathan's feelings, and Nathan took care to give Olivia her space. All seemed well. Then, about two months ago, I went on a weekend-long trip with my boyfriend, which unfortunately ended early. He had to head back to work. I had told Olivia that she had the place to herself for the weekend, but I was too tired and disappointed after my trip was cancelled to tell her I was coming back. I slipped in at around 7pm before she came back from wherever she was and fell asleep until I awoke at some ungodly hour to certain noises between Olivia and who I presumed at the time to be Nathan. I made a mental note to scold them in the morning for being gross and went back to sleep. I was in the kitchen at around 10am to make coffee and breakfast when Olivia's door opened and a male figure emerged. I was going to make a lame joke at Nathan's expense, but when I turned around I saw not Nathan but some lanky redhead guy I'd never seen before. He seemed embarrassed and hurried into the bathroom and I went to confront Olivia. She told me that she and Nathan had an open relationship and he was fine with her bringing guys home sometimes. Considering that an open relationship is most certainly not Nathan's style and he'd never mentioned it to me before, I called her a liar, to which she responded that they didn't have to tell me every detail about their relationship and I was creepy for asking. She said it with such confidence that I think even she believed it at the time. Every fiber in my body was telling me not to trust her on this, but she and Nathan seemed so happy and their sex life was definitely not my business, so I let it slide. She had done some awful things to him over the years, but cheating was not one of them. Nathan and I hung out one on one a few times after that, but I never got the courage to ask him if the open relationship claim was true. 
Now, for the past three to four weeks, Olivia had been on edge and wouldn't tell me why before we left for the break to be with our families. Then, last week, she texted me that I was going to have to find a new roommate since she and Nathan were moving in together. I was happy for them, but a bit surprised by how sudden it was. I was going to text Nathan to congratulate him, but he called me first. He sounded over the moon and said that Olivia had revealed to him that she was six to eight weeks pregnant. While he was telling me about how he planned to propose to her and where he wanted their wedding to be, my heart sank. There was no way they were in an official open relationship. He had no idea about the redhead guy or any other guys she might have brought over. She was cheating on him. After my call with Nathan ended, I called Olivia and told her to meet me at our apartment as soon as possible since we needed to talk. We met up and got into what must have been a six-hour screaming match. At some point during the fight, she admitted that Nathan didn't know about her sleeping around, but it was okay since she was always careful and was completely sure the baby is his since redhead guy definitely wore a condom, I swear. I told her she was full of crap, overflowing is the word, needed to confess to him right away, but she refused. She said how this was finally her and Nathan's chance to be happy, and she didn't want to spoil anything for him. Yeah, I'm sure that's the reason, you and me both, OP. She told me that if I ratted her out to Nathan, she'd paint me as a crazy attention seeker trying to ruin a new family since I, one, was having trouble with my boyfriend, two, had no proof of the redhead guy, and three, had always been jealous of Olivia since Nathan noticed her first, which is something I felt six years ago and got over completely. She got so vicious and irrational that I had to leave and stay in a hotel for the night. At some point, she went back to Nathan's place and, as planned, he proposed. I know it seems obvious what I should do, you think? But I can't seem to summon the courage to tell Nathan. I've been holed up in my now lonely apartment, blowing through my vacation days, trying to decide what to do. I've never seen Nathan so happy before, and there is a chance that the baby is his. Yeah, a fat chance. But of course, there's a chance that it isn't. Olivia plans to try and completely destroy my and Nathan's friendship if the truth comes out, and he's in such a state right now that I honestly think he'd go along with her. I know I want to tell him, but I am unsure of how to do that without it backfiring. Well, OP, you might as well just do anything because your friendship with Nathan is pretty much blown anyways. If he does marry Olivia, guess who's the first person that's going to get cut out of their lives? You're probably not even going to get invited to the wedding, which of course is the least of any problems here. Now you are right. If you just go over to Nathan and tell him, hey, you know what? Olivia's been cheating on you left and right. He'll probably deny it, get angry with you because he knows it's true and block you for some time, but at least the seed will be planted. Now, of course, it would be better if you had any kind of proof and ways to get that would be one, try to confront Olivia again and get her riled up enough that she'd confess and you're recording her. But I would kind of think that Olivia would see through that because what's the point in that conversation? The other would be any kind of proof that she might have left in the apartment in her old room. I don't know, maybe a contact number or something for that redhead guy because if you can get him then Olivia's done. But like I said in the beginning, OP, even if you don't have any proof, you need to tell Nathan something, at least for him to get some doubt going. Because that's the only possible outcome in which you would actually be able to help him and try to save your friendship. Because other than that, you gotta say bye to Nathan. Oh, and before I forget, Olivia is scum. I just needed to put that out there in the universe. What do you guys think about this whole situation? What would you do in OP shoes? Let me know in the comment section. And now let's move on to the community comments to see what they said. Striator says, I have no idea why you consider such an out-of-control person your best friend, or why you think your friendship with either of them will survive. Either Olivia drives a wedge between you and them anyway, or he finds out you hid it from him for months, or you tell him and it blows up, but at least you did the right thing. The bridges with both of them will be burnt one way or another, so maybe you should get the guts to tell poor Nathan for once. I said that. 
Smith & Wesson says, tell him everything, no doubt about it. What do you think will feel worse? The uncomfortableness of letting him know, losing a friend like Olivia, horrible human being anyways, or whatever else he can think of. Or watching him and them over years and then decades, looking like a family but knowing that the child isn't even his. Let's be real now. And having to cover for Olivia when she continues to cheat on him? If you don't tell him now, this won't be the last time you'll have to cover for her, 100% guaranteed. All her threats are idle and meaningless. Sounds like you're good friends with Nathan, so he's not going to believe any of that nonsense she threatened to tell him. Do the right thing and tell him, please. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if you find out that Nathan's had a strong feeling that she's been cheating on him. And Mitten Bay says, your friendship with both of them is pretty much done. Even if you don't say anything, make up with Olivia and go along with Olivia and Nathan's marriage, Olivia will keep you at a distance from both of them because you know too much. So you may as well go nuclear and tell Nathan in one final act of friendship. He may not do anything with the information, but it's better to give him the choice. Additional information from OP's comments. Olivia is Korean, so I don't think red hair is possible for the baby. I could anonymously tell Nathan to get a DNA test before the wedding, but only I and redhead guy know about the cheating, and he doesn't know about the pregnancy, so if Nathan asks, I'm the only source. I wish there was a way for me to contact redhead guy and let him know, and save me a buttload of trouble, but I have no idea where to even start looking. Now, I doubt she'd agreed to come and talk with me again though, but if she does, I'll be recording. I want Nathan to know. I just want him to actually believe me. I may be his good friend, but a fiancé or soon-to-be mother of his child takes precedence. Anyway, I made up my mind and thought about how I will approach the subject. I'm meeting with him on Sunday. Wish me luck. Well, the community was pretty clear with OP and apparently what they said did get to her because despite all of her reservations about telling Nathan with no evidence, she's gonna go ahead and do it. So let's move on to the update to see how this story ends. But of course, before that, here's another one of my playlists for you to enjoy after this video. Now let's move on with that update. First of all, thank you everyone for the advice. I was so unsure of how I was going to go about telling Nathan, but it was definitely his right to know. So, last week, I told Nathan to meet me on Sunday to discuss a surprise for Olivia and that he shouldn't tell her about the meeting. He asked if we had a fight since she seemed mad at me and I said that it was just a minor spat over rent. My stomach was in knots over the whole thing. So on Thursday, I went out with some friends, Pat and Marie, Olivia's other close friends, for drinks. I didn't tell him about the whole business with Nathan and Olivia since they are her friend as well. As we were talking and drinking that night, Pat mentioned that she saw Olivia's new engaged status on Facebook and how she was so excited about the wedding. Mary said she saw it too and was surprised since she thought they weren't together and since Olivia had seemed so into Robert a while ago. Immediately after she said this, she seemed to realize that she had said something she shouldn't have, but I pressed on. She revealed that Robert was Olivia's former co-worker from a coffee shop job she briefly had that she had been seeing on and off for the past year. When I asked what Robert looked like, the first thing she said was, he has red hair. I took her aside and told her that I needed to contact Robert as soon as possible but couldn't tell her why. I'm sure she could put two and two together. But she told me where he still worked, or at least was working up until a few months ago and a rough estimate of where his apartment was. After some sleuthing around, thankfully he still worked at the coffee shop Marie mentioned, I was able to get in contact with Robert early Saturday and explain the situation to him. I told him that Olivia was pregnant and it could possibly be his kid. She has a fiancé she is lying to and that I wanted him to sit down with me when I told her fiancé Nathan. At first, he refused and almost slammed the door in my face, but I was able to convince him that Nathan wouldn't attack him or hold him responsible for the cheating. To Robert's credit, he didn't know Olivia was with Nathan at the time. She told him that she and Nathan weren't serious and said that he would try to be a part of his child's life if he or she actually were his. Apparently, he and Olivia had been friends with benefits and he liked her, but two months ago, a little after I caught them, she told them never to call her again.
Anyway, on Sunday I met Nathan in my apartment with Robert. At first, Nathan refused to believe us and said we were just trying to break him and Olivia apart, and that Robert probably was just a scorned ex. There was some shouting involved and Nathan broke one of my chairs by throwing it, but he eventually believed us. He said he knew I wouldn't lie to him about something like this and that he always suspected something was up but was too in love with Olivia to press the issue. He wanted to seem tough, but I could see his heart was absolutely broken. Robert contacted Olivia and told her he knew what was up. She came to meet us at my apartment, thinking she'd only see me and Robert, but immediately became hysterical upon seeing Nathan was there too. She started saying that Robert and I were setting her up, we were trying to kill her and the baby by stressing her out, mm -hmm. and other absolutely mental BS like that. Nathan was surprisingly calm with her and he took her back to his apartment to discuss their engagement and the baby privately. And finally, yesterday Nathan told me what happened between them. Olivia eventually fessed up and said that she was only with Nathan because he was stable and had a good job, but he was boring and she wasn't satisfied. He broke off the engagement and demanded a paternity test on the child, saying that he would raise him or her himself if he is the father, since Olivia is obviously not capable. Olivia stormed out and claimed she was going to terminate, but whether or not she'll actually get one is currently unknown. She is apparently staying in her mother's house currently. Nathan plans to use up his vacation days to take a long break so he can mentally recoup and I'm giving him his space. Well OP, I'm gonna call this a positive update for everybody except the baby. I don't really care about Olivia, so if she likes it or not, doesn't matter. Hopefully whoever the father is can step up and raise that baby because like Nathan says, Olivia is obviously not capable. So here's wishing all of them, except Olivia, the best in the future. Thank you for sharing OP and take care. Now let's move on to the next post that like I said in the beginning, also has an update. This post is from the subreddit relationships and it's by user deleted. Girlfriend 20 female and I 21 male, Facebook activity and communication issue. My girlfriend and I are in a bit of an argument right now and she is upset. I won't apologize because I don't feel as if I've been controlling. My girlfriend has this habit of not keeping me updated on what's going on throughout her day if we have tentative or even solidified plans. This bugs me sometimes because when she's with me she has no problem replying to messages from other people. So last night's argument was that Monday is a really busy day for her but we made tentative plans to see each other maybe that night when she's off of work. Well, 8pm came around and I'd heard nothing from her, so I decided to check Facebook Messenger to see when she was last active and it said 6.30pm or something. Girlfriend calls me at 8.30 letting me know that her phone died and she was out with her mom. And I go, yeah, I checked Facebook to see if I should bother calling you to confirm we still had plans or something at like 8 and it said you were on at 6 something. This proceeded to her saying, that's creepy and that I'm being controlling, apparently. I personally don't see this as controlling. She gets carried away, hadn't told me anything since 9am about our possible plans and it was literally 3 hours after she was supposed to have gotten off work. She claims even if she unlocks her phone in the bathroom to check the time, it shows her as active, but she doesn't have time to let me know we still have plans. Which is cool and all, but I don't see how me checking if she's been active on stuff and if I should call cause she's out of work is controlling. Well, OP, first of all, from my understanding, you need to open the Facebook Messenger app to actually be showed as active. Maybe she just didn't like getting called out. I don't see it as controlling, to be honest. It's just information. It's not like you were sending messages and calling her right away, like, where are you? What are you doing? Who are you with? Nothing like that. So the message that I'm getting here is that she just doesn't see you as important as other people, which is a bad thing in a relationship. So yeah, OP in summary, I agree. This is not something that you need to apologize for. And what do you guys think about this situation? Should OP apologize for that or not? Let me know in the comment section. And now let's get on with those community comments to see what they said. Fiona Elaine 4 says, that's not how Facebook Messenger works. She has to open the app or Facebook to show active. That's what I thought. G -g 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 baby 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 says I get the feeling that she just doesn't prioritize talking to you. If she's unwilling to be honest about that, then you have bigger problems. 
And Happy Family Go Go says, This is definitely not controlling. I don't know what your girlfriend expects you to do when she leaves you waiting around. That's not nice behavior. And if I were you, I would want to check as well. It looks to me like your girlfriend is avoiding you. Let's say she had something else to do or even just didn't feel like hanging out that day. It would have been decent enough of her to let you know and have you hear back from her. All right, well, the community is of one line. The girlfriend doesn't care that much. And I agree with that last commenter. If she doesn't want to hang out with OP, it's absolutely fine, but at least let him know. Anyways, let's move on to the update to see how the story ends. We ended up breaking up. She called me on her lunch break saying, you still haven't apologized. And I kind of laughed and said, I don't really plan on apologizing. I didn't do anything wrong. I wasn't even that upset with you. You were just being inconsiderate. Then she said, then we have a problem. You understand that, right? So I said, well, then I guess we have a problem. And she hung up on me. And then she texted me, I'm upset with you right now. Honestly, don't even want to talk to you. I need some time away from all of this BS. By the way, I'm still at work in case you feel the need to check Facebook. I replied, I honestly don't care. I disagree with you completely. You were inconsiderate. Her close friends read the thread and our text messages and were also on my side apparently. And she replied, then find a new girlfriend. She was always having an issue with things she saw as controlling. Mm, she also was always hesitant to post me on Snapchat. But the day we break up, she was all about posting who she was out with. Whatever, we're done. Life goes on.